Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report, part of News Now and the Belmont Journal. I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, we ended segment B of town meeting, and that wraps up town meeting for this time of year. Um, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about what happened? Well, uh, other than uh, the school uh, budget, everything passed pretty quickly, like 205 to 1. <laughs> all the other budget uh, uh, for all the other uh, departments in town, um, the capital uh, uh, capital requests all were uh, approved. Um, uh, Chris Doyle did a great job as uh, the capital uh uh, the new Comprehensive Capital Committee. That's right. Uh, but we did have one bit of excitement during uh, Segment B, and it had to do with the school department and an amendment All that, right. that was uh, promoted by a number of residents. Okay. okay, so why don't I jump in, Franklin, and just say that, uh, uh, for disclosure, I was involved in an effort um, supported by a number of people to uh, uh, amend the school budget. Uh, by $280,000, an increase uh, to support uh, special education programming. And the amendment failed. And Franklin, why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened? Well, uh, the amendment was, um, uh, I would call it, if you, if you consider the budget process, it was a last minute uh, amendment. It was something that um, had always been a part of uh, what the school department wanted to do. You know, they, they you know, they wanted to... Uh, uh, basically hire some people who would, you know, allow uh, um, uh, two, I believe, directors or um, uh, department heads uh, for the SPED uh, uh, department. Um, I, 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 I think they were, I think they were uh, special education uh, instructors. They were instructors um, and also uh, $100,000 that would be going to uh, um, basically the consultancy uh, that would allow uh, the, 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 um, of the department to um, come up with a plan to bring more uh, students uh, who are being taught out of district back into the district. So I believe that that was what the amendment was. It was a very popular amendment. People got behind it. You could see by the number of people who were supporting it publicly that it, it did have a, a, a lot, it appeared to have a large amount of support at, at town meeting. Now, the interesting thing happened is that um, the town, along with the select board and the warrant committee, who were completely opposed to it, <laughs> this amendment. And it had nothing to do with special ed. It had everything to do with the budget process. Yeah. So, you know, if the, if the school committee and the school department who voted you know, unanimously for their budget didn't put it into the budget, why should this outside group be allowed to put money into this, um, into a good, into, into, into for a good cause, but still why at this late process? Uh, and it, it, and, let, let me just go back to a little bit of background. Uh, the uh, select board um, decided that, you know, maybe there, there was a, 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 some way of having a compromise. And uh, Mark Polillo, the head of the select board, um, uh, uh, basically was negotiating a compromise, which would be, would be instead of going into the budget, rather than just giving uh, the school district an extra $50,000, it would have been $50,000, uh, that would have gone to hiring a consultant. So that would do basically the same thing what the um, amendment was doing. But that way you wouldn't be, um, you wouldn't be breaking apart the budget. You know, you wouldn't be going into free cash and, and there wouldn't be any movement. There yeah, I think there was a, the proposal was to use um, some unspent ARPA funds. That's right. You know, and it was something that the, the, the town had on hand. So um, that compromise looked like it was going to pass. You know, the, there was a meeting of the select board just before the, before town meeting. Uh, Elizabeth Dion seemed to uh, buy in on this, and um, it turned out that Roy Epstein was just opposed to it, and then he had information for it, and that kind of turned Elizabeth Dion to maybe not supporting the compromise. Uh, she began to wave on it, and then uh, what, what, what Roy Epstein was doing is basically saying, uh, if you really look hard and do a deep dive into the budget for the school committee, uh, school department, they have the money. So. I'm not saying that this is here nor there actual an actual fact, but um, he he made that point. Plus, he said, "Look, I I believe if we give our if we give our arguments not to support this, that the town meeting will will support our view rather than the people who are who who had the amendment." 
and um, a lot of us <laughs> observers and along with um, Mark Pavolo thought that, you know, this is a last chance where we could, you know, not see money moved because this looked like a very popular amendment. So it went down to town meeting. It went to debate. Um, and what we saw was uh, it was actually a pretty interesting. You know, there was a lot of people up front who said, this is great. You know, what we want is to put more money into the school district. You know, this is a great thing. We have we have issues with, with SPED. It, it's one of the biggest cost uh, drivers we have. So the so the earlier earliest point we can do and, and bring that um, cost down, the better. Now, the people who opposed this amendment came out and said, we're not opposed to special ed. We're, we support it. We know that this is an issue. Um, but, you know, if the school district didn't put it in there, it must be for a reason. Now, the reason, uh, and, and this is one reason, they said, look, we're having a new superintendent coming in, and she's, a, she's committed to, to doing this, uh, to, uh, to find a way to get more kids into our district. So why don't we just wait for her to get on board on July 1st, and then let's talk about that. Then they also said, look, if you start this, you're really you're not being part of the process, you know, because the budget process starts in September, goes throughout the entire year. You have your opportunity to make your, your point. School, uh, school department, uh, school committee voted for a budget. It, it voted six to nothing on the budget that was presented before town meeting. Now, of course, uh, a little bit of an off, off, off the tangent, uh, three members of the school committee also, uh, uh supported this amendment, which is, you know, I, 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 I kind of question that if they, you know, if they voted for the budget. So um, I shouldn't say I question it. I, they, they did it, basically. So and there's also other people who said, look, we, there are there are lots of things in the budget that we would like to do. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 there was a, a person who's a, a, a wife of a firefighter who said, look, you know, the firefighters need all these new radios. And, and basically, we can only hire, we only can get half of those, or, you know, they, they need a lot more um, life-saving equipment for the fire department. And she said, well, well why, you know, why, why don't I put in an amendment? Why don't we put in an amendment for everything that we, we want or need in this town? And, and, and she said, basically, that's because it's part of a process. And I think that really kind of, that kind of moved the people around. We also saw uh, some people who supported the amendment um, uh, basically say, "Well, now I'm going to vote against it," and that kind of uh, kind of <laughs> a lot of people were were questioning that. And also, um, you had the three uh, select board members come up and make impassioned speeches, basically saying, "Look, you know, we want to support it, but we can't." And Roy Epstein came down; he's an economist, so he had all the, he had all these numbers. Now the now the problem with those numbers is that no one could vet it in the short period of time we had before before the amendment was uh, accepted and and then debated, and that's because the warrant committee wasn't given the time. So that's so that also gives you a, a situation of why you shouldn't have amendments at the last minute. The warrant committee can't really vet these numbers. We really don't know if there is a lot of money uh, in the school district uh, budget that they can they can hire the, uh, the this. Um, these two um, FTEs and uh, spend the money for the consultancy. You know, so, so it kind of it was, um, it became an issue of where I think the process, people said, look, let's wait till the superintendent comes in. The process can go then forward. We do have a little bit of ARPA money. Maybe we can do something with that. So it oh. kind of it kind of just kind of faded at the end. The support kind of faded. You saw a lot of people ask, you know, very serious questions about, shall we do process i know one person said it was a slippery slope you know if you're going to put an amendment it better be very very needed like you know uh, elementary school fell down we, we need to build a new one let's put this amendment in all right franklin so it, it was it was interesting uh there was almost two hours of debate over two hundred eighty nine thousand, and um, you know what's remarkable is that um town meeting um spent you know, comparatively little time um, uh, discussing or 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 debating um, all of the other funding in the budget. We, and the, pub, the, the public safety budget came up, and uh, uh, Chief McIsaac and 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 our fire chief uh, DeSantis uh, basically said that, um, yeah, we, we we came here with all this information, um, but no one wanted to hear it. So it, 
no one, no one debated it, and a, a multi-million dollar budget passed like that with maybe two votes against it. All right. Well, we'll have to see what happens at the next town meeting, Franklin. Um, thanks for that report. Uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about hardware and specifically Winters Hardware in Belmont. Uh, what's what's happening? Well, Franklin? I talked to Miss Shepard, who's owned this, who's owned uh, Winters Hardware for 26 years. She bought it from the original family. It's 99 years in business, but she says basically she can't pay the rent, and the, and the reason why is that no one's going to hardware stores. You know, the, where she used to have a, a great supply of people who would come and say, "Oh, I have to repair this. I have to repair that. Can you do this for me?" She's saying that, you know, nowadays younger uh, homeowners, they either go to Home Depot or they just throw things out. You know, they're, if, if they're not going to have a screen repaired or a small engine repaired or, or getting a small little bout of paint, you know, they just throw it out and they'll just go out and get a new, a new something that they need. So Winter's Hardware is very much almost like an, an old fashioned kind of It is store. right out of the night. It's like, it's like, you know, you, you're wondering why Jimmy Stewart isn't, you know? <laughs> Isn't isn't giving you the wrench, you know, from from the side. It's right, right out of the 1930s. It's these small little small little cabinets so you can uh, you know shuffle through and find the right bolt. You know, there's uh, it's 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 a wonder. It's, a, it's you know get keys made right there. You know, it's uh, she she has a little of everything in her store, and she said, you know, if she can, she would like to. If business does. Um, uh, start to go forward you know it gets a little better she wants to stay until the first of the year and then she can celebrate her 100th anniversary and she can go out on top basically well it's a, it's unfortunate that that the store may have to close and it will um, it will also close because there's a it, we should also say that uh, one of the reasons why it could close is because you know um there is a per, there is a developer a belmont developer a very prominent developer who's known more for his development in Boston than he's uh -huh. been in Belmont and he is and he has made um, uh, queries into into the town and, and and also in those businesses like the gas station that's uh, at Belmont and common um, you know uh, whether he can um, it, he's thinking about purchasing those those properties yep. to build basically what we have here uh, we should say we're at Starbucks and I'm just going to point over here and this is of course Cushing Village you know over here. And he wants to build a second, what he calls a second phase of the Cushing development. And we should realize, you know, when they built this right over there, um, uh, they had an overlay district, which means it has special zoning. Uh, so you could build something high and, you know, it, it kind of is a second uh, uh, bit of, of, it's like a zoning, it's like a, 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 a zoning zone. That you can build higher and you know with more space and, and we're not we're not talking about high rises though are we no something exactly like what 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 was here you know okay. you can only build a certain height so but he but he's you know looking very seriously at this and you know and um and we might see but i but, but talking to people like glenn clancy who's the development direct, director in belmont he, you know he says this is this is just still like he won't he uh, the, that developer won't be coming forward to the town for at least two years if so, he, if, so, even, even if he if he does even try so this is a potential project in its very earliest stages meaning that this is just people thinking at this point well he's not just thinking he's, okay. actually, he's actually gone to people and and and, and um, starting negotiating like payments for property so he's he's serious on that end you know, you know, he's not just going out there and going, oh, I want to build here. He's actually going to owners of properties and going, what do you want? All right. Well, unfortunate for winters. Maybe we'll see something else that's not a high rise, but we'll, <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't know <laughs> yet what it will be. Um, all right. So, Franklin, let's move on and talk about the Pride Parade coming up. What can you tell us about that? Pride is coming up on Saturday, uh, June, 7th, uh, June 17th, uh, you know, almost the first day of summer. It's always a great event. And we, we have to say also, you know, Pride events across the country, especially in the South and in red states, they are being canceled. They're being, you know, uh, they're, they're becoming smaller. They're, they're, uh, being attacked by uh, by um, conservatives and, and religious people, um, and we have to you know consider ourselves lucky that we have you know that people really 
um, uh, support pride in Belmont. You know, there's no active, you know, the, the government, you know, isn't going out and trying to stop them to, 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 to go. So it's, it's a, it's a great day. Come out, support pride. It's going to be a shorter parade. I mean, the, 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 the original parade, that was a long trip. Even, uh-huh. even for me, it was like a long way around. Uh, so this, this trip is going to go from uh, Belmont center up Concord Avenue to the veterans Memorial then down Concord Avenue. And, uh, then ice cream. Why? Why the shorter parade route? It was simply just too long. The other one was way too long, and and this one is is flat and will allow people with disabilities to uh, participate. All right. Well, come out and participate if you can. Unfortunately, I'll be traveling, or I would be there. I will. I will also. Uh, that that day is a conflict for me because of uh, Belmont rugby. Uh, the success the successful Belmont rugby teams are going to be in state in the state championship on the 17th also. So I maybe just be there for just a very short period of time. All right. Well, um, let's move on and talk about uh, the high school graduation. Belmont graduated how many seniors? Uh, 315, but somebody, somebody, somebody said it may have been a little more. I counted the, the people on the, on the program, <laughs> so I was like, there's 315, so he, there might be a few extras, but approximately 315, which is, which is a good number. My son graduated in 2009, and there was 250 there. Now, um, uh, the weather didn't cooperate. <laughs> Man, it was cold. It was literally, people were chilly. But it was also raining, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, it was it just, the, it, it sprinkled, basically, for a few, few times it sprinkled. Thank goodness, you know, the rains uh, didn't come uh, like they said they were. Um, in Melrose, they had to cancel uh, graduation because it was raining too hard. Uh, and so, um, you know, it was a it was a great event. You know, we, we have um, uh, uh, speeches by students. Uh, Nikki Masharaf uh, is the class president. She was she was she had a very good speech about, you know, there are times when you're always told to like, <clears throat> you know, you know, never quit. Just keep on doing what you want to do. And she said, sometimes you, you know, it's not a bad idea to quit, you know, and, and you might find something new in your life. So I think that was a really nice way of doing it. Leo San and Anna uh, Lehman were the um, uh, school committee award for outstanding achievement. They were just fantastic. They were they had fantastic speeches also. So, um, you know, we just had a great time there. Uh, the graduates then uh, received their diplomas through their caps in the air. But one tradition that we, I, I did see kind of wane because of the weather, smoking cigars. And, and the reason was it was just too cold. Everybody wanted to just get out of it. <laughs> all right. Well, that's too bad. But yeah, too bad for that. Uh, all right, Franklin, thank you for the report. Oh, Ooh. I'm sorry. We have one more. We have one more story. Playoffs for the Belmont that's teams. That's right. Uh, Belmont tennis, Belmont boys tennis. Uh, had a great run. Um, uh, they uh, they got to the final eight, uh, the uh, I guess quarterfinals, and um, uh, I had to go all the way down to Duxbury, and then travel from Duxbury to Kingston to an indoor facility to see them play on Saturday. Uh, they fought really well. Each they had uh, two matches. I went into overtime, uh, the uh, but they just met a really very good program that's been around for 20 years that have been just outstanding and uh, so they lost five nothing but uh, nothing to uh, be feel sad about it you okay. know we had we had uh, Alex uh, Karagosian who was uh, the uh, really the, the star of the team for the last three years uh, and um, uh, Ben Packard who was the other co-captain uh, these guys are going to be missed uh, but uh, the coach uh, Dave Benson said I got some good players coming up, so we'll see. We'll see if they're in the playoffs next year. Okay. And finally, uh, our rugby team, boys and girls rugby team, they had a in the first half of both of their semifinal games. They they got they got put a scare into them. You know, Belmont and BC High, Belmont boys and BC High were uh, tied seven seven going into the half of, uh, against, like I said, BC High. But then you know we have um, uh, two outstanding rugby uh, players. Uh, one, set, one is uh, Asa Rosemeyer. He's a, a member of the uh, boys national team, mm-hmm. you know, so he's really good. And he basically took the ball, you know, he's six foot three, 280 pounds. So he would just go through people. <laughs> he just go through the line like, oh, see you later uh, with the ball. And, uh, and, and Jake Cornelius, our great kicker. And uh, so they won 49 to 14. 
Uh, they basically took off from the second half. They are going to meet uh, their uh, uh, what I call nasty rivals because they are <laughs> nasty rivals. Uh, this is uh, St. John's uh, uh, St. John's Prep from Danvers. They've always had. They're they're about a, they're. A, I, I will say they're 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 very talkative when they're on the field. So Belmont has a little bit of a, you know, they're, they, 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 they will, they will really play hard throughout the game, even if they're okay. ahead by a lot. Now the girls, they, they actually uh, went behind. They actually were, they fell behind uh, Weymouth when they were here uh, uh, seven to five, but then Belmont scored. So it was 10, seven going into halftime and, and Weymouth was just, their tackling was great. They weren't as sophisticated as a team, but, they really ran through it, and uh, uh, but uh, Belmont uh, came back and just had some really wonderful tries. So they won uh, thirty-one to seven. Oh, that's and, great! And just want to just uh, uh, talk about Alex Townsend. She's a, she's not one of the scores, but she's a, a fabulous tackler, and uh, she knows how to lay off balls to let girls go around the ends and, and scores tries. So, so again, <clears throat> these games are going to be on Saturday, uh, June seventeenth at curry college in canton off of 128 can't miss it okay so please go it's a it's a fun time it's going to be crowded it usually is it's a good crowd uh for rugby and you can learn a lot about the game i guess the girls are going to be at either two or three o'clock and the boys at four or five o'clock they still have not settled on an exact exact time okay so be there if you can and thank you franklin you can see more of franklin's reporting at belmontonian.com please check it out and be sure to check us out next time and we will see you then